Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today for your daily dose of dead, we got a couple articles, but first we're going to kick off with Ezekiel. I do want to clarify one thing real quick, though. I know a lot of daily doses of dead are going to cover uh, different news articles. That way I'm not suffocating you guys or drowning you guys in a whole bunch of daily mini uploads, unless that's something you guys want. I don't know, but uh, I'm trying to collect a couple news stories when they come out, combine them and talk about them, but daily doses of dead are not only about news stories sometimes we do um like the video game you know something that's in the post-apocalyptic or zombie or slasher or whatever uh so just let you know we finished the last of us i'm still under the weather i'm trying to bounce back when i bounce back the content is going to be a little better we've been a little slacking but <laughs> i'm trying to heal as fast as i can just to let you guys know we did finish the last of us gameplay and the season one of The Walking Dead by Telltale, and we're moving on to um, <clears throat> uh, season two shortly. So if you're into those, they're on the channel. Now let's dive into probably the heaviest news we got recently, which is uh, Ezekiel. King Ezekiel might be leaving The Walking Dead in season nine or season ten. Yes, I know it seems like uh, we cover news every week <laughs> of someone leaving the show. Well... This one's a little bit different because it's not him going to any spinoff or there's no contract negotiations. This is someone, some news site called We Got This Covered. I've never heard of them before. They claim they have a trusted source that Carl Payton will be saying goodbye to The Walking Dead in either Season 9 or Season 10, which is already uh, in the works or already um, you know, being written and all that. Our sources can't say for sure when it will happen, but Peyton has already been notified about what's in store for his character, and it sounds like it was a writer-led decision and not because the actor wishes to leave the show. Now, here's the thing. Remember when, what was it, Nerdist News came out with this exclusive, and this this is definitely going to happen when uh, the Fear of the Walking Dead and the Walking Dead were going to, a uh, character was going to cross over back in like season one. Now, I know it happened later on, but they were completely wrong. Whatever source they got, it was completely wrong. Some of these places get sources completely wrong. All right? It just happens. Now, maybe they know that comic uh, Ezekiel is dying in the story coming up, so they figured, hey, you know, maybe he does die, and this would be a good article to pump up anything, you know? Or they do have a source, and he is leaving in late Season 9 or early Season 10, I think there's definitely potential for Ezekiel to carry on his story because of his connection with Carol is drastically different than his connection with Michonne in the comic book. And the direction the stories went, uh, it w there's definitely a potential to keep uh, Ezekiel around. However, if you want to bring Carol back into the fold and away from the kingdom to kind of... Um, centralize the story and have the characters less spread out if that's a plan of theirs then yeah killing Ezekiel and bringing Carol to where Henry is in the hilltop uh, having her enter the the story in that way could benefit them so if you're going to get rid of him I don't want to see him nor do I think there's a, a, a logical reason at this point for him to die in the beginning of season 10 so he most likely should die at the end of season nine with the big border reveal mostly because visually that's an awesome visual having his dreads blowing in the wind i don't know man i like that visual but you guys are gonna have to let me know what you think about this down in that comment box sorry there's no other news about this that's pretty much it a source says that they got a a uh, little bird telling him he might be bouncing in season nine or season ten and we just gotta just gotta wait and see now, one of the other news sources has to do with Breaking Bad. This I just want to cover real quick because I know a lot of people are saying, oh my God, Breaking Bad is airing on Netflix. The Breaking Bad movie. It's airing on Netflix first and then AMC after. 
And yeah, this is a complete reverse because the TV show aired on AMC and then on Netflix. And there was a logical reason for that. AMC's a network that picked up Breaking Bad. And then once the season ran, they were able to do distribution on Netflix. Uh, again, once the full season was out, they did it on PlayStation as well. And, uh, you know, they did it on uh, Amazon with... Um, I forget, Better Call Saul. I mean, it's just basically a distribution deal, you know? Now, the big difference between the AMC AMC movies with Rick Grimes and Breaking Bad is AMC owns The Walking Dead. They don't own Breaking Bad. Vince Gilliam or whoever, I don't know if it's him or his company or him, and I, I don't know specifically... Who owns it? All I know is it has to do with Vince Gilliam and not AMC. They own it, or they and their company own it. AMC doesn't. So Vince, Vince Gilliam is getting the money together to, to get this project off the ground, and they go to Netflix for a distribution deal. There's no ties to AMC. They don't have to go to AMC. However, AMC is where the show aired originally. It would be a great business idea to keep it over there. Obviously, because of the um, a lot of the customers watching it on AMC will likely rewatch it on AMC when they air it again. Just makes sense. I think Breaking Bad is big enough you could give it to anybody, and it, it'll get a lot of eyes. However, so for everyone thinking that you could hold out, and AMC will put the Rick Grimes movies on Netflix. I'll tell you right now, that might be possible after it airs on AMC, but it will not come before it airs. It's not going to be like this. Keep in mind, AMC is doing the premiere. The movies are a premiere exclusive, and unless something changes and premiere crumbles and they need different distribution or different ways to get it out there, or unless Netflix is like, yo, here's a buttload of money, Let us get that. There's just no way. It doesn't work like that. So it's most likely going to air on AMC exclusively and never go to Netflix. I think personally as as a business decision, that's what AMC should be doing. There's no reason why you want to set up your own streaming service. And uh, well, right now it's, you know, it's, uh, it's in its infant stages compared to Netflix. But if you want to set your own streaming service, you don't give your stuff to other streaming services. Just like Disney, everyone's like, oh my God, why are they canceling all these Marvel shows on Netflix? What What's this all about? It's because Disney's creating their own streaming service. Yes, that's right. To watch Disney movies, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney cartoons, they want you to go to them and HBO and Netflix. Everyone wants their own streaming service and yes, they want us to pay it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Honestly, if we get rid of cable and we just, you know, $20 here, $5 here, $16 here, that's actually cheaper than my cable bill. Bill, My cable bill is whatever a month if I get Netflix, HBO, uh, AMC Premiere, and Disney streaming service, that's still like $10 cheaper than my cable bill. I don't even watch cable except for for The Walking Dead. So for a lot of people, that might work. For a lot of other people, that might be a terrible idea. I get it. It's one more monthly bill. On top of that, all these companies are doing mystery boxes. That seems like that trend is kind of dying down now. But I think that's the, the idea that businesses have to look at. Everyone is moving towards some type of monthly payment whether it's uh, software for doing stuff on the computer or streaming and entertainment every month. You have YouTube you're paying for to take no ads to download or for music stuff. And then you got Netflix and then HBO and now AMC Premiere. And then you got some subscription boxes. You're a collector. You're, You're into Funkos or whatever it is. Every single month you're paying out to something. That's becoming... Um, not only a standard, but it's becoming overload. But the future seems like there's going to be a a lot more of that yet. And I just, at what point are these companies going to come together and create some some type of um, uniform streaming setup where you just go and get this one thing? Like AMC, Netflix, and HBO, 
they come together and do one. Or AMC, Netflix, and Disney come together and do one, and then everyone jumps onto that. You pay one bill, and it's consolidated or whatever. That might be thinking ass backwards. That might never happen. I'm just saying <laughs> that would be kind of cool. Uh, you never know what the future holds, and it all depends on how it's streaming. That might be my uh, – my, uh, Fever, though. Uh, that might be a, a crazy fever thought, so forget I said that. Anyhow, I spent way too long talking about Rick Grimes' movies. Moving over to a really good article. I'm going to leave this link in the video description. This is The Actress Who Plays Alpha. I thought this was a very interesting article. It does talk about her being separated on a farm, and she had no idea what The Walking Dead was. That part was weird. <laughs> Uh, she doesn't watch TV. She just has like a movie projector. I don't know, man. I know people find that relaxing maybe when I get a little older, but right now that sounds like torture. Her lifestyle sounds like torture to me, <laughs> but Hey, I know there's people who dig that lifestyle. So have at it, but it's a really good article. A couple things I'm being blasted, uh, by a handful of people who claim that she's a transgender, which I don't know where this is coming from. If somebody can pinpoint the re I just don't, she's been in the industry sh since she was like 20. I've been following her, not following her in everything she's been doing, but I've been seeing her on, uh, she did take a break for a few years, but I've been seeing her on shit since she was in her twenties. She was even pregnant. There's images of her being pregnant. I don't know where this whole, she was a man. I don't know where this came from, and I don't. I, if someone can just, maybe there was like some clickbait article or something that was going around. But if it is, guys, d just Google it. Look, at, her whole life is pretty much on recorded history, entertainment history. You could pretty much look at everything where she came from and what she's been doing. She gave birth. She has kids. She was born a woman. She's been a woman. I don't even think there's been any controversy that has to do with anything which being transgender that revolves around Samantha Morton, that the actress, unless you're getting it confused with some other person. I don't know. But that was just a little weird thing that popped off in the last couple of days. But um, interesting article. One thing that I thought was so freaking cool is when she got to the set and she was in the costume and all that and she was surrounded by zombies. She thought the zombies were so friggin' awesome looking. She walked up to the extras and she was like, uh, uh, do you mind? Can I look at you? Uh, can I talk to you? Whoop de whoop. And I thought, how crazy would that be? You're a comic fan. You're excited. You're an extra. You're on the set. You know how Alpha is or you know who Alpha is. And then the actress playing Alpha walks up to you <laughs> and, and is like, yo, that is a cool mask. <laughs> you, you are one cool looking zombie. <laughs> well, you know, and she's like, do you mind if I stare at you or chit chat with you? I think that would have been cool for the couple of walkers that were able to have conversations with her or had that experience. That is something that would be really cool to talk about on set. <laughs> to throw this in here, there was some article by Screen Rant, nine must-watch shows for fans of The Walking Dead. I honestly thought this would be a nice little thing to pop in here, but uh, this is a weak clickbait article. You got Santa Clarita, which I will say they're going into their third season. I'm hyped about this. If you haven't seen it, I freaking love Santa Car Clarita Diet, whatever. It's probably one of the best comedy zombie shows out there ever. Uh, it's freaking hilarious. It's way different than you think. It's way different than others. It's not post-apocalyptic. It is real weird, but it, it, just give it a shot. You might enjoy it. Definitely up there is one of my favorites when it comes to zombies and comedy. Z Nation's on the list. I don't know how. Uh, I think Z Nation's just a cop-out. You don't even got to watch Z Nation. Just throw it on the list. I think that's a cop-out, but I know some fans that watch both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hate it so much. Stranger Things, yeah, obviously. I think that is a great show, but would probably be lower on the list uh, if you were looking at just zombies, apocalyptic, and shit like that. Falling Skies, that's an easy pick. Uh, Lost, I highly recommend Lost. Leftovers, I highly recommend Leftovers. I loved it. It used to make me so mad in the beginning, but then I just started loving it. Um, Fear of the Walking Dead, uh, Game of Thrones should be number one out of this list. And then Outcast, which is a surprise... I just feel like the person who wrote this has no freaking clue what they're doing, and they just picked, oh, look, Robert Kirkman wrote that. It's his comic book. Duh, number one. Game of Thrones. Duh, everyone loves it. Fear the Walking Dead. Duh, that's a companion thing. Leftovers has this post-apocalyptic feel to it and lost it. Yeah, I don't know. Some of this list, I just feel like they just slapped it together to be kind of a clickbait, but... Um, the last thing I do want to discuss that I just remembered, there was an article that came out about Chandler 
uh, and Chandler's dad. And the only thing in the article is Chandler's dad did confirm AMC made him take down the original article he did eight months ago. Eight months ago, we did a video on it. Uh, he put up an article on Facebook saying, not an article, he put up a post on Facebook saying, hey, yeah, you know what, I'm really mad about Scott Gimple and disappointed. They told my son he was going to be on the show for a few more years, and then like five weeks later or you know, two or three months later, they fired him, and I'm really disappointed. He bought a house, he bought this, and let me clarify something because every time we bring this up, people say they fired him because he was, he was going to college. That is not true. Even his father confirmed that is not true whatsoever. Another person or a lot of other people say that he got fired because he turned into an adult. Again, that is not true at all. It's easier to deal with an adult than it is with a minor. With a minor, it is more expensive, not just what you're being paid, but all the restrictions. You can't be on set for a certain amount of hours, and that goes for if you're 15 or 17, as far as I, I know from reading the, the articles and the rules and restrictions. But it would have been easier for AMC for him to be an adult. So that is not, again, those are all just rumors, some things that fans just assume it's what it is. I don't know exactly what is the reason. I feel like there has to be something because seeing how they just simply replaced them, it's not like they were doing this big change to the story. They just literally replaced them with a different actor. I don't know. I'm sticking with uh, they felt like they needed an actor w who has a, a better range, and I think that's all they stuck with. I think that's all that it took to convince them we need to, to bring in somebody who has a little bit better range. Um uh, you know, there could be something else to it, I don't know, but just to let you know, I, I've seen a lot of comments ever since this article came out, and I don't know where these comments are coming from because they didn't confirm anything. Scott Gimple does, I'll admit, he does sound like a dick uh, because he did say that Carl was going to be on for a couple more years, and then, like I said, a little bit later he fired him. But um, that is the industry. That's how it goes. He did win the lottery. He's one lucky bastard for the, you know what I mean? I just feel like you should have just came up to the kid and been like, listen, we have a couple roads we can go down. One road, uh, you're going to you know, be short-lived. The other road, uh, you might be on it for a little bit. Right now, we're leaning towards the little bit. So let's sign contracts, whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. And then that way, it's not such a shocker. But it is what it is. Uh, but like I said, there's a lot of different crazy theories going around that it was confirmed. And I think they're clickbait articles. It was confirmed why they fired Carl. It wasn't. In no article was it ever confirmed, revealed, or talked about. There is no why. At this time, the why is only what we know from Scott Gimple, which is he needed it for the story for Negan and all that. Which, again, I don't buy it because simple law and order would have solved all that. What do you do with a bad guy? You kill him? Well, no, because what happens if somebody gets in a bar fight? Do you just kill them? No, we need law and order. So what better way than to take out the leader in the war and lock him up? And he could be your first official sign for law and order. You get in a bar fight, there's a law. You're going in jail for two, three days or whatever it is. It's literally being shown right now with Henry. That would have been perfect for the Negan story without having to kill Carl. You know what I mean? Anyway, thoughts and opinions about everything we discussed down in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn.